This feels super sketchy. <laughs> Hi guys, today I'm going to be working on Project Teeter Tot, my 2001 Audi TT Quattro project car. For all of you that are new to the channel, there's a video stuck to the ceiling here that you can click on. They'll get you caught up on the issue I was having with the TT running hot. For everyone else, today we're going to be finally addressing that issue of the temp fluctuation that Teeter Tot has been having. slew of parts. So what you see right there is a bunch of stuff that was sponsored by ECS Tuning for the TT to upgrade this cooling system. So shout out to ECS Tuning. If you own a European car, you probably already know who ECS Tuning is. They're like the god of parts for Audis, Volkswagens, BMWs, Porsches, stuff like that. All right. Pretty thick box. Silicone cooling hoses, a cooling additive, paper, paper, Motul Mo Cool, and the most important part of it all, that bad chicken right there, is an aluminum dual core radiator to upgrade the crusty old factory 18 year old radiator that's on the TT right now. Remove front bumper cover. Lower radiator between engine and condenser and remove from below. Alright, time to make a mess. just weird. Fun fact, if I would have left all of that as just raw footage, this would already have been a 45 minute long video. The magic of YouTube. There's a slight underlining of saltiness here. Sorry. So right here are my factory side mount intercoolers. And as you can see, this hole right here, this is where the hardware for the front bumper cover comes through here. And it makes it impossible for me to remove my front bumper cover with using a socket because the socket rubs on my side mount intercooler. So I definitely want to try and see if I can adjust these later before I put them back on. So that way I have more access to take that hardware off. Ideally, I'd like to just upgrade to a front mount intercooler, which I'm going to need if I plan on doing a bigger turbo on this bad chicken. How many times in this video can I say bad chicken? Goodbye coolant. Brand new coolant. Down the drain. I was trying to work my YouTube magic and make it seem like it took me two minutes to remove this radiator, but unfortunately I ran into a bit of a snafu. S snap, snaggle, I don't know what the word is. Anyway, the lower radiator hose, the way these are hoses are retained on the radiator, there is a plastic fitting with a little metal retaining clip that locks into place and then you're supposed to be able to slide the hoses with this little plastic piece off of them, but they're stuck right now, they're binding. I was so tempted to just cut this hose, but it's not the right way to do it. You can't just cut it. You know sometimes you need to cut it. A few of you will get that reference. Oh yeah, huge mess. Say sorry 
I didn't record like two hours worth of work because I had to go get tacos. I was absolutely starving, so please forgive me. I made a little bit more progress. You didn't miss much. All I did was remove that rat's nest of harnesses and plugs that goes to the fan control module as well as the coolant temp sensor. Unplugged all that stuff. Remove this doodad that goes around the bottom of the intake manifold and blocks access to the radiator hose going to the thermostat as well as all the hardware for this guy right here. The radiator fan assembly was just held in with four screws. And now I have to take this guy off right here, the uh, lower intercooler crossover tube so I can have access to drop my fans and my radiator out through the bottom. Morning. Another day, another Sarah. I had to call it quits last night because I started getting pissed off. I have slicing my arms up trying to pull the radiator out. It's free for the most part. It's ready to drop out the bottom. So uh, I just went and picked up an oil pressure switch for the car because my oil alarm is constantly going off for low oil pressure and the car does not actually have low oil pressure. It's a bad sensor. So I'm going to drop out the rest of the radiator now, pull the car back out into the driveway and pressure wash the front half of the car because I want to clean up as much of the gunk inside there as best as possible. Cue that work music. Me? I'm the one that cues the work music. Why am I telling you this? I'm gonna leave this in the video just so I can show you how weird I am. CD got to me and I just hit up the AC condenser for a little bit of black high heat paint and I got the tiny space heater on there trying to dry it quicker so I don't die from the fumes when I pull the car back in the garage. Looks better though. I got most of the grease and gunk and stuff out of there and the AC condenser is pretty clean now too. That was ridiculous. This car is heavy. Of course. Of course you would be a pain to get off now. <laughs> So the whole deal with the oil pressure sensor on the TT is uh, it's bad. <laughs> my low oil pressure light's constantly on. Oh, my arms are gonna be all cut up. I'm gonna look like a definite lot lizard by the end of this video. Maybe I can do it from underneath. Yeah, dude. That was a real treat. Luckily it wasn't that tight because if it was, I would have been screwed. I would have not been able to turn this to get it off. Hmm. Okay, time to put the new one in. This is really easy to do with the front of the car all apart. Let me be 100% honest with you guys right now. The TT, realistically, for me to be able to take this thing to the track and really beat on it, it still needs quite a bit of work. I'm not confident in this car as far as its reliability goes. I do need to pull off the turbo because my exhaust manifold gasket is leaking out at the turbo as well as the oil return line and the coolant line back there are all leaking. Oh, I love working on crusty 20 year old cars. <laughs> it's my favorite. <laughs> Heck yeah, dude. I got a, a wobble on there. So now I might be able to tighten it. It's exciting. I'm gonna leave this blue protective jacket on the radiator before I stick it in here because I don't want to mess up any of the fins. So once it's in there in position, then I'll pull off the blue protective jacket. 
It came with uh, new hardware. Huh, cool, new hardware. Ran into a slight problem. You see right here the AC condenser? There's this bracket that goes over here to the, I believe that's the dryer for the AC system. Um, well, this curved bracket hooks around and then this housing sticks back out this way. Well, the original radiator was a lot thinner so it fit into this slot, which enabled that little tab with the hole on it, it's kind of blurry, to attach to the radiator. Well, I can't, get the radiator to fit inside there now because it's fatter. So what I'm gonna have to do is bend this housing outward so I can fit the radiator into this gap right here. This feels super sketchy. Come on. Wonder if my AC will ever work again. Here. Now I carefully need to slice this blue stuff off. Very carefully. This is really hard to capture on camera, but if you see right here, this is the bumper, the inner bumper support. Right here is the dryer for the AC. And as you can see right here, the dryer is hitting this bumper support. And see this little housing right here? There's no way for me to get the radiator. This little tab right here is attached to the radiator. It's supposed to sit inside this little cup right there, but I can't get it any closer because the dryer is hitting right there because the radiator is a little bit fatter. The only way this is gonna work is I need to cut this bracket off. The dryer for the AC will still be attached. It'll just be held with the upper and the lower lines and kind of wedged in between the frame and the radiator. This bracket that used to hold it before, there's no way to reuse this. There's no way to retain it. I have to trim it off for this to work. biggest piece of crap when it comes to cutting through metal like this. Oh, well, that was my last bit. Well, so much for that. I just destroyed my last Dremel bit. It's like 10.20 at night, so. I'm not gonna be able to finish this in this video, which really sucks, because this was just a radiator install. You think it would be done already, but that's what happens when you work on 20 year old crusty cars. You take things apart and then you find more stuff that's wrong and you fix that and you clean stuff while you're in there and paint some stuff. And next thing you know, you're um, two days into something that should have took four or five hours to do. So that's just life working on old project cars. Anyway, the next video that you see, I'm going to just finish modifying that AC dryer bracket and uh, get the intercooler crossover two back on there and button everything up. But let me know in the comment section below, would you guys be interested in seeing me do some work on the intake manifold while I still have the front of the car part because I have new gaskets for it as well as some vacuum lines. And I was thinking about pulling the intake manifold off and doing it with a wrinkle black finish just to give it more of a modern and kind of clean look under the hood because the aluminum finish that's on there is all like corroded and just nasty from this car coming from Utah. So yeah, that's just my idea. Anyway, I will see you guys soon in another video and thank you for watching. Bye.